Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise the Lord God of Israel. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And let's go into Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read verses 13 and 14. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now let's go into Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, for they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. But I tell you, sisters and brothers, no matter what nobody tell you, don't let them tell you that you don't have to keep God's commandments. Because the only difference between a sinner and a saint is the command. Sisters and brothers, you know, I watch YouTube sometime, and sometime I, uh, 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 and then I look at the ministers, see where they are, but uh, about a month ago, I was watching YouTube, and I saw this pastor, Geno Jennings. And when I got through listening to him, I was so upset until I started writing. 
And when I got through writing, I had a lesson that I had put together. I'm going to give you the title of this lesson, and then I'm going to let you see some of the things that upset me. We're going to put it out there for educational purposes, okay? But when I got through looking at that lesson, a title popped in my head. And this is the pop title. God, is it two of them or just one? who talks to himself. God, is it two of them or just one who talks to himself? Now, I'm going to show you some of uh, uh, Pastor Jennings' stuff, and then we're going to examine some of it because I want, I want you to understand what this lesson is about. Now, I want y'all to put the first part one of this up, brother. The gospel. This knowledge here, the Bible says. How be it there is not in every it man. It is not in every man. That knowledge. That knowledge that there's one. That's right. Amen. There's a matter of what's going on in the world. That's right. One. one. I don't care what scripture you read where God said, let us make man. One. One. And our one. one, our likeness, one, right. because the Bible said, how be it? How be it there is not in every man. Down in Jordan, voice speak from heaven. Holy Ghost come as a bodily shape of a dove and light it upon him. That's right. One. one. That's right. Hmm? That's right. Do you hear it? How be it there is not in every it man. in every man. That knowledge. Every man don't have it. That's right. I said every man don't have it. <laughs> they have to be given by the spirit. Now, now, he's talking about just one God, the Father and the Son, the same person. Now, he said, no matter what nobody says, it's just one. No matter what scripture you read, it's just yes, one. Sir. Did y'all hear that? In short, if you read in the Bible, uh-uh, it's just one. And it's not every man that had that knowledge. In short, He's one of those that have this great knowledge than the rest of us. But we're going to read number two now. Let's look at it. In Genesis 1, 26. Was God talking to angels or himself? No. He is the only one. And well, if you look at what God says, let us make let man us. in our image. He said, let us make him. That's right. Genesis quickly now, 126. And God said, let us make man in let our image. Let us make man. Right. No, he was not talking to the angels. Because when he said, let us make man, he couldn't be talking to the angels because the angels are not creators of man. That's right. Let us angels make man. Angels can't make nothing. In fact, the angels was made themselves. That's right. So when he said, let us make man in our image, after, after our likeness. Our likeness. Mm -hmm. And verse 27, let you know how many made man. Genesis 1 and verse 27. That's what? So God created man. Oh, wait a minute. So God, G-O-D. So God created, created man. Created man in his own image. In the image of God in the image created of he God. him. So i tell you who was he talking to. In the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and at verse 11. i let you know who was God talking to because we only got one creator here. That's right. Uh -huh. Ephesians 1 and verse 11. Yeah. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance. Yeah. Being predestinated according to the purpose of him. Uh -huh. Who worketh all things. He will work everything. After the counsel of his own will. When he do work, he counsels with whom? After the counsel of his own will. When he made man, he was counseling with whom? Of his own will. When he made the heavens and the earth, who was he counseling with? Of his own will. When he made the sun, who was he talking with? Of his own will. When he made the moon, who was he talking with? After the counsel of his own will. When he made the sea and all things therein. Who was he talking with? After the counsel of his own will. The devil don't want this to come out, do we? Amen. I'm fighting with the fly. We're <laughs> fighting with the fly. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. We're going to fly it out anyway. That's right. So he was uh, doing this after the counsel of his own will. Now I want to answer uh, another question that's tied to that from another writer. Uh, they said, well, Pastor Jennings, was Jesus, was God talking to the angels when he made Adam? Because you said he was talking to the angels. 
God was counseling within his own will. His own will. The scripture where God was talking to his angels yeah. is in the ninth chapter of the book, book of Joshua. Joshua. That's enough. Now, you know, all of a sudden now, he couldn't come up with nothing to justify that. So now he's going to go to the apocrypha. But he said, if he's talking after his own, what he's saying is God was talking to himself. Is that what y'all got out of that? One but one. Now, this same gentleman, I heard come out of his mouth to say, because he was arguing with what you call the people that call themselves Trinitarian. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, you know, uh, that uh, 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 as far as the Trinitarian is concerned, you know, uh, uh, that ain't, uh, uh, there ain't no three. But he's saying the same thing. He's just dropping one. Then he turned around and he harpooned the Catholic church. Well, let's see where, what they said. Now, let's see first thing with the Trinitarian. Let's see how many gods they talking about. Okay, put it up there. <clears throat> We're going to see. Now, read that first part of it, Antoine. This, this is the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Now, this is the Catechism. I got this straight up out the Catholic Church. You know, yeah, I got me a Catechism. But I want to know what everybody doing. Go ahead. The mystery of the most holy trinity is the central mystery of the Christian faith and of Christian life. Uh -huh. God alone can make it known to us by revealing himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Oh, so number one, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what they said? Mm -hmm. Sound familiar, don't you? Yep. Go ahead. The incarnation of God's Son reveals that God is the eternal Father and that the Son is co consubstantial with the, with the Father, which means that in the Father and with the Father, the Son is one and the same God. The Catholic Church said that. How you going to harpoon the Catholic Church just saying the Father and the Son is the, are the same? And you teaching it. And you're going to jump the Trinitarian? Well, they had the Trinity too. So what I'm saying, sisters and brothers, nobody's paying no attention. Don't we have one more to read? One more source. Okay, the last one, put it up. From the North American Mission Board about Oneness Pentecost. Jesus is said to have two natures, human and divine. Thus, when he died, only his human nature died. Also, when Jesus prayed, it was his human nature praying to his divine nature, not to a separate father in heaven. So, you know, so his divine nature, which was in heaven, was listening to the prayer of his human nature, yes. which was on earth. Yes. And, and Go ahead. Geno Genesis, one is Pentecostal. And that, now, then who they come Pentecostal, right? Yeah, what is, is he? One is Pentecostal. Go ahead. The one is Pentecostal view of God is similar to the ancient heresy of modalism. Modalism is the b belief that one God existed in time in three distinct modes of being. First, as the Father in heaven. Second, bodily as the Son on earth. And finally, as the Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> That's so it. It's one, right? Yeah. It is one. Did you read the one I had in the uh, two million years? No, that was... Uh, you, yeah. You, you dropped that. Okay, then. There's so many. So now, am I wrong for saying the title of this lesson, God, is it two of them or just one who talked to himself? This title was inspired by Brother Jennings. Now, we are going to start this in Genesis in the creation, and we're going to look at this thing. Let's go on to Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis chapter 1. See, I'm... You see, this is not, I want y'all to understand something. I'm not picking a fight with Brother Jenny. What I'm doing is, for the people that are listening, will have an alternative. And that is the word of God. Like sometimes, that's why I don't get off in the debates. You know why? Because I don't have no dog in this fight. How am I going to debate something about something that has already been written? Either it's right or either it's wrong. So if it's right, accept it. If it's wrong, then 
God made you a free agent, you, you don't accept it. We're going to start this at verse 1, and then we're going to skip down to verse 26. I'm going to go right where he went oh, in, the, uh, in the beginning. Verse, uh, Genesis 1 and verse 1. Okay, read it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Uh-huh. Now skip down to verse 26. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image. Now he said, let us make man in our image. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. After our likeness. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Uh-huh. And over the fowl of the air. Uh-huh. And over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. See, now God is a unipluer word. But man is a unipluer word. To let us make man in our image and let them have right. dominion. Right. But that's man, like that's M-A-N. Right. That defines I use it for less than for, for, for uh, 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 lack of a better word, that defines the species. Go ahead and read. So God created man in his own image. Uh-huh. In the image of God created he him. Now he now he made the thing, so God created man in his own right. image. Look. Sisters and brothers, if one created man in his image, the man got head, he got feet, he got mouth, he got eyes, he got legs. Then if he's created in one image, which is the image of the other one, mm. then he created in our image, didn't he? Right. It's all that simple. But go ahead and read. Male, in the image of God created he him, Male and female created he them. God created he him. Male and female created he them. So, sisters and brothers, man is just like God. I use the word man. How many of you out there come under the head of man? Male and female. Mm -hmm. But still it's a singular, isn't it? Right. But it's a plural. Same thing with God, sisters and brothers. See, for these people that's got this special uh, 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 wisdom, look like they should have paid some attention to that. But you can't go and get the writings of one Paul, you're going to read one verse and try and destroy all the law and prophets from Genesis to Revelation. You're going to read one verse and don't let the... Scripture tell, wait a minute, ain't this Bible, ain't this, this is not even scripture you read, you're just reading a letter of a man to a, a bunch of Gentiles. So you're going to take Paul's letter and tell people, this is it. Anything other than one, don't pay no attention, even if it is in the scripture, don't pay no attention. Wait a minute. Something wrong with that, ain't it? Did he say it or did I, is my hearing wrong? He said it. So I don't want to falsely accuse nobody. Now let's go on to St. John, the first chapter. St. John, chapter 1. Because well, I want to know, sisters, I want you to know what's written in the book, sisters and brother. This is not a, a fight with me and Mr. Jennings. It is reading the book as opposed to what we heard come out of his mouth. That's why I wanted y'all to hear that. Because somebody been running, well, you know, boo is running around lying on Pastor Jenny. No, no. But it's one thing you can condemn the Catholic Church for something that you adopted. Right. Right. Catholic Church got both of them. They got the Trinity, and then they turned, down, uh, turned around and got the two. But still, in both cases, they are both one. Didn't we read that? Brother Boo, what you doing with the catechism? I got more than you think. I got the pocket for two. I got the book of Enoch. I got them all. You know why? Because I'm going to study them, and when you lie, I'm going to bust you. Mm -hmm. I never forget when the prison ministry, when I was going out there, Brother a Muslim in there talking, and I was talking about Malcolm X. He said, are oh, you a Muslim? Have you read the Koran, brother? I said, no. How can you talk out of it? I said, you got a point. Went and bought me a holy Quran and read it all in one week. And the next week I went out there and busted in him in his own book. God is a wise God. 
And if you're going to study him, you have to be wise too. That's why Jesus said wisdom is justified of our children. You got to do this thing, sisters and brothers. St. John 1, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. St. John 1 and verse 1. Now, we are going to let the book explain this. Everything we read today. Verse 1. Go ahead and read. In the, in the beginning was the Word, uh -huh. and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, we'll let you know in the 19th chapter of Revelation on your own. We ain't going to look at it. You can jot it down. You go read. When Jesus come, he says, his name was called the Word of God. That's right. We're going to show you that means he's a spokesman. His, his voice is the only one we heard. The word, in the beginning was the Word. That's one, ain't it? Mm -hmm. The Word was with God. That's two, and the Word was God. That looks like we got God twice there, don't we? Mm -hmm. And more than just inside one person. But go ahead and read. The same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning. I can't get around with. Mm -hmm. So I was in the beginning with myself. Well, where else could I be right. with? <laughs> if myself and me is I. Right. Go ahead. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, who? The word, sisters and brothers. I want you to understand, we're going to show you that Jesus is the executive officer. He's the one that executes what the head officer, which is the father, tell him to do. And he's going to tell you with his own mouth. So the same was in the beginning, of, and all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. And to show you who it was, skip down to verse 10. Go ahead and read. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, uh -huh. and the world knew him not. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. That let me know that was Jesus. Father ain't never been here. So now, let's go. In the Isaiah the 48 chapter, and look at it. So all things was created by him, and everything that, and if, and if it's not, uh, if he didn't do it, it don't exist. Then he came into this same world that he created. All we're going to do is we're going to read this Bible, sister and brother. Brother can get up and holler and scream and do whatever he want. I expect a whole lot of whining, but he ain't whining on me. You whining on the book. How can you debate me? I didn't write nothing. Debate the author of the book. And I ain't the whole reader by myself. He read it first. <laughs> Isaiah 48, we're going to start at verse 12. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 12. Okay, go ahead. Hearken unto me, O Jacob. And Israel my call. Go ahead. I am he. Uh -huh. I am the first. I also am the last. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. Go ahead. Mine hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth. My hand also laid the foundation of the earth. Go ahead. And my right hand hath spanned the heavens. And my right hand hath spanned the heavens. Go ahead. When I call unto them, uh -huh. they stand up together. And when I call unto them, they stand up together. Skip down to verse 16. And go ahead. Come ye near unto me. Uh huh. Hear ye this. Uh huh. I have not spoken in secret. He said, Come near to me and hear me. I have not spoken in secret. Go ahead. From the beginning. Uh huh. From the time that it was, there am I. He said, From the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. Mm -hmm. He didn't say, There was I. That's right. There am I. Because he's the ever presence too. Go ahead and read. And now the Lord God and his spirit. Hath sent me. Oh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How can this be his flesh and blood, blood body saying this when he is up there with the Lord when he told him go down? Now the Lord God and his spirit have sent me. Who was sent? No, we're going to read. I'm not going to fabricate. See, when you read something, you have to talk too much about it. That means you're fixing it. You're putting your spin on it. I don't know spin. So let's go into St. John, the sixth chapter. St. John, chapter six. 
Now I want you to see, you know, you don't blow your horn. It's all that simple because you don't know who's watching you. That's why uh, uh, a lot of brother, well, you know, brother boy, you know, <laughs> you, don't nobody know who you are. God know who I am. And the people that I'm teaching know who I am. Well, brother, you need to be known. I said, yeah, just like you get known for praise, you can get known by your enemies to come and take you out, too. Yeah. Ain't got no problem operating under the radar. Well, they ain't trying to please man. I'm trying to please God because he's the one that's got salvation. Anything other than that, that don't bother me. So who was it that sent? We're going to start at 6 and 35. 6 and we're going to start read verse 35 and then we're going to skip. Okay, read it. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Go ahead. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Now, this is Jesus we're talking, ain't we? Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 48. Verse 48 and go ahead. 37. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 38 and go ahead. 37. Uh, verse verse uh, 30, 37. Go ahead. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. That means that whoever he got, the Father had to give him to mm -hmm. him, don't it? Go ahead and read. For I came down from heaven. Not to do mine own will, uh -huh. but the will of him that sent me. Oh, so now we know who was sent, don't That's we? right. Go ahead and read. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me. Uh -huh. That of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. That's the Father's will that sent him, didn't That's it? Right. Go ahead and read. And this is the will of him that sent me. Uh -huh. That everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Go ahead. And I will raise him up at the last day. Say it again. Skip down to verse 44. Go ahead. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Uh -huh. And I will raise him up at the last day. He keeps saying. So what does he do? If you listen to the gentleman, you said, well, what he did? Or see, I'm the father now, Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Go down to the earth so you can die for the people. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. Where's the father? Oh, he's here. Come on, sisters and brother. This was something that they worked out. I don't know how or what now. However, we know who was sent, don't we? But didn't that mean he was less than God? Let's go on to Philippians, the second chapter, and see. Philippians chapter 2. Well, I just said, I can't believe my ears. I just can't believe. I'm talking about come up with something complicated. How can you misunderstand something so simple, sister and brother? Philippians chapter 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. 2 and 5. Now he's telling us to let this mind be in you, because eventually, God, you will be God. Oh, brother, boy, that's black. Hey, you know, God, just like you're a man, and when you become God, you are God. Because it tell you in Romans the eighth chapter that Jesus is the firstborn of many brethren. So if you're the firstborn and you God, what do you think your siblings gonna be? All that simple. So this is what Paul is telling you in Philippians, verse five. Go ahead and read. Let this mind be in you. Uh, let which, this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Go ahead and read. Who, being in the form of God, uh -huh. thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Oh. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. With. Oh, you mean, how you got a problem? You're going to tell you I'm equal with myself. Weird, ain't it? But keep on. 
but made himself of no reputation uh -huh. and took upon him the form of a servant uh -huh. and was made in the likeness of men. Oh, so now he took up on the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of the people that he created. That's right. Go ahead and read. And being found in fashion as a man, uh -huh. he humbled himself Go ahead. and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now it said he, he became a man. How can that be? Now, he was in heaven. He never left heaven. Now, he got to, he, I guess this, whew, I can't even understand. I ain't going to even try. <laughs> Keep reading. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him uh -huh. and given him a name which is above every name. Wherefore, God hath also exalted him and given him a name above every name. You mean he going to give him a name above his own name? That's weird. But we're going to see. Keep reading. That at the name of Jesus. Oh, so that's the name of Jesus. That's the name of everything. Yes. Go ahead and read. Every knee should bow uh -huh. of things in heaven. Go ahead. And things in earth uh -huh. and things under the earth. Go ahead. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So now this name glorifies God the Father. He gave, he did, this was not his name. He got this name when he came. Whose name was this? Let's go into St. John, the fifth chapter. See, this is the book talking, y'all. You understand? I'm just putting my word in because I got a big mouth. But the book is doing the talking. St. John 5. And we're going to start at verse, and we're going to read 37, and then we're going to skip down. Because there's something else I wanted to pick up right quick. Five and uh, 19, rather. I'm sorry. Five and 19. Because there's a few things I'm going to pick up on my way to going now. Okay, read it. Verse 19. Go ahead. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, uh -huh. but what he seeth the Father do. For wait, what a, wait a minute. He's telling you right now that I can't do nothing of myself. I don't do what the, what the Father uh, 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 won't tell me to do. Go right. ahead and read. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So in other words, I ain't doing nothing on my own. That's right. The Father created the heaven, but he did it by the hand of Jesus. It's just how many people, you know, hey, man, I, had, I built me a new house. <laughs> you ain't laid one brick. What you did was you hired your contractor and they built you a house. But you built it. You know why? Because it's your money. Skip down to verse 37. Verse 37, go ahead. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, uh -huh. hath borne witness of me. Go ahead. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. Wait a minute. You mean, ain't nobody ever seen the Father? That's why when people ask, an apostle asked Jesus, show the Father, he said, you've been seeing me and you, all this time and you haven't seen me. Is he the Father? That's country? No. Remember, man was created in their image. So when you see the Father, see what he look like, you know what the Son looked like. You see a dog come by there, then you see a man coming. Now, you know what a man look like. Do you see a dog? He said, that's a man there. No, no, that's a man over there. They look different. You understand? But God looked the same. What do you mean? Look just, got the head, eyes. He made an eye image. People said, what God looked like? I would have said, look in the mirror. That's right. But you ain't never seen him at any time or heard his voice. But skip down to verse 43 and read it. I am coming my father's name. I am what? Coming my father's name. I'm coming my father's name. Go ahead. And you receive me not. And you don't receive me, but go ahead. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. And one did. You know who it was? John the Baptist. He came in the spirit of Elijah, but he came in his own name, John. 
So if he come in his father's name, then I wonder what was his name? Let's find out what it is. Like I said, we're letting the Bible talk, sisters and brothers. So when somebody want to, well, I want to do, uh, no, you ain't got, I ain't got nothing to say to you. This Bible is speaking. Let's go into Exodus, the sixth chapter. Exodus chapter six. You know, I don't, I don't want you to get me wrong. I ain't calling nobody a fool. You understand? But I saw a sign when I was in California on the wall that when a wise man argued with a fool, the passers-by don't know which is which. I ain't calling nobody a fool. I'm just quoting what I read on a sign. So what we're going to do is let the Bible do the talking, sisters and brothers. Exodus 6, and we're going to start at verse 2. Exodus chapter 6, and we're going to start reading at verse 2. Okay, read it. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, uh -huh. I am the Lord. Uh -huh. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. Uh -huh. But by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Oh, so he had another name. By my name Jehovah was I never known. That's why then we don't talk about baptizing the name of Jehovah, don't we? That's why we don't say the name of Jehovah is given the only name under the sun by where my men might be saved. So Jesus came in his father's name. Therefore, the father's name was Jesus. Ain't this what the book said? I didn't say that. The book said that. That's why I wonder, sisters and brothers, When he was sent, when he was sent, why did he say, I'm the only God, and I knew, and, and there ain't no other? I knew not of it. Let's go and see who he was talking to in the first place, and let's see who he was talking about. Let's go into Isaiah, the 44th chapter. Isaiah, chapter 44. I saw all these we's and us and uh, our, and then you're going to tell me it's only I? I said, there have to be some biblical definition for that. You know, I noticed something about the Apostle Paul. When he spoke with the Hebrews, he wrote the book of Hebrews, it's altogether different from Corinthians and Colossians and Philippians. Why? Is because when he talked to the Hebrews, he talked to people that had some knowledge. And when he talked to Corinthians and Philosophy and all those guys, the Gentiles, he was talking to some people that was totally ignorant of the word of God. So you don't talk to a grammar school person like you would talk to a college grad. So when God talked to Israel, when Jesus talked to Israel, he didn't talk to Israel like he talked to the Father. And he had a reason for saying what he's saying, that he is the only God. See, in the old days, before most of these people was around, see, like, sisters and brothers, like I said, I've been around a long time, a long time. I done heard it all. All the Hebrews used to think, well, ain't but one God, and we don't know where this Jesus come from. I see, he came out of Genesis. Isaiah 44 and verse 1. Then we're going to skip now. Go ahead. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, uh -huh. and Israel, whom I have chosen. Because this is the one that's got to fix it, his servant Israel. Skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and go ahead. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, uh -huh. and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. I am the first, and I am the last, 
and beside me there is no God. That's pretty clear, ain't it? Go ahead and read. And who as I shall call and shall declare it. And, and who as I shall call and shall declare it. In other words, what God is there going to do this? Go ahead and read. And set it in order for me. Uh-huh. Since I appointed the ancient people. Go ahead. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Go ahead. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and uh -huh. have declared it? Ye, ye are even my witnesses. Is there God beside me? Yeah, there's no God. I know not any. He said, am I declared even in time of past? You are my witnesses. There's no God but me. I don't know of any. But then we're going to keep reading. We're not going to stop there. Go ahead and read. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity. And their delectable things shall not profit. And they are, and they are their own witnesses. They see not nor know that they may be ashamed. Wait a minute. He's talking about graven images here. Uh -huh. He's talking to the people that deal with graven images. Go ahead and read. Who has formed a God or a molten, a graven image that is profitable for nothing? Who have formed a what? A God. He's talking about God that was made by the hands of men. Mm -hmm. Then he, we ain't gonna read all this, but then he gonna show this man how foolish he is. Skip down to verse 14. 14 and keep reading. He heweth him down cedar. And taketh the cypress and the oak, which he strengthened for himself among the trees of the forest. Uh -huh. He planteth an ash, and the rain doth nourish it. Go ahead. Then shall it be for man to burn, for he will take thereof and warm himself. Uh -huh. Yeah, he kindleth it and baked bread. Yeah, he maketh a god. Wait a minute. He, he cut this tree down. He make a fire. He baked bread. He warmed by it. Did he make it the God? Go ahead. And worshipeth it. Uh-huh. He maketh it a graven image and falleth down there too. Keep reading. He burneth part thereof in the fire. With part thereof he eateth flesh. He roasted roast and is satisfied. Uh -huh. Yeah, he warmeth himself and said, Aha, I am warm. I have seen the fire. Go ahead. And the residue thereof he maketh a God, uh -huh. even his graven image. Go ahead. He falleth down unto it and worshipeth it and prayeth unto it and said, Deliver me, for thou art my God. He said, Now look, this man hadn't thought about this. Look what he said. Keep reading. They have not known nor understood. They have not known nor understood. For he had shut their eyes. For he have shut their eyes. That's because they don't want to see. Go ahead. That they cannot see. Uh -huh. And their hearts that they cannot understand. Go ahead. And none can Wait a minute it. now. He's talking about these people that can't understand. Mm -hmm. That bring in mind this person that's wiser than everybody right. else. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. Go ahead and read. And none considereth in his heart. And none considereth in his heart. Go ahead. Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say. I have burned part of it in the fire. Neither is there knowledge of understanding him to say I didn't burn part of it in the fire. Go ahead and read. Yeah. Also, I baked bread upon the coals thereof. And I don't bake bread with the coals that come from it. Go ahead and read. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. I have roasted flesh and eaten it. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? And shall I make the residue of their abomination? Go ahead. Shall I fall down to the stock? Of a tree? Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? This is the God that he is talking about. The ones that man made. I'm the only one that was sent. There ain't no other. So all them pagan gods, like you got Dagon, you got Baal, you got Astarte. You got Ra. And all them other gods. He said, there ain't no God but me. You made these God. He was not talking about the Father. Why? Because the Father sent him. Now you're going to come down and say, okay, I'm the only God now. Well, if that's the case, then this don't make no sense. Let's go into Isaiah the 57 chapter. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah 57, we're going to read one verse. We're going to read verse 15. Verse 15. 
Isaiah 57 and verse 15. Read it. For thus saith the high and lofty one. For thus said the high and lofty one. That inhabiteth eternity. That inhabiteth eternity. Whose name is holy. Whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him. With him. It just said them. So with that means him. he ain't talking about angels, uh -uh. is it? With him. And that means it can't be an extra one, can it? Mm -mm. With him. Finish that. Also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. In other words, to recover this man from his own suicide. How many is it there? Now, was one dwelling on the earth and the other one dwelling in heaven talking to, talking to him? Both of them was there, wasn't it? The earth ain't no high and holy place. Both of them was there. That's right. Then the Lord sent him. Let's go into Psalm 45. This is Bible, sisters and brothers. And you're going to let some, you're going to accept this because some person said, don't believe no scripture if it don't say one. Didn't you hear that with your own ears? That's why I wanted to play because I don't want to be accused of falsely accusing nobody. In fact, I am not accusing anybody. I know what Jesus said when he came. He said, I didn't come to judge the world. Mm -hmm. I came to save the world. But the words that I'm speaking, they going to judge you on the last day. So what's dealing with this? The word, not boy. This battle is not mine. This battle is the Lord. Psalm 45, start reading at verse 1. 45 and 1. Okay, go ahead. My heart is indicted in a good matter. Uh -huh. I speak of the things which I have made touching the king. Go ahead. My tongue is the pen of a ready writer. He says, I speak of things touching the king. Mm -hmm. He ain't talking David here. He's talking to one that called himself the king of Israel. Right. So that means he ain't talking father here. Look at these big titles he got. Go ahead. Thou art fairer than the children of men. Thou art fairer than the other children of men. Than the children of men. Than the children of men. That separated him apart That's from right. it, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Grace is poured into thy lips. Grace is poured into thy lips. Right. By what are we saying? Grace. Grace. Grace is poured in our lips. Go ahead and read. Therefore, God hath blessed thee forever. Therefore, God hath blessed you forever. Go ahead and read. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty. Whoa. <laughs> you know what most mighty mean? Most there ain't nobody no mightier than you. Whatever might there is, you got it. That's right. Well, this guy is something, man. Mm -hmm. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh. O oh, most mighty, go ahead and read. With thy glory and thy majesty. With thy glory and thy majesty. He's majestic. That ain't a wrong man. You know when the young man called Jesus a good master, what should I do to get eternal life? You know what he said? Why callest thou get me good? That's right. Only one good, and that is God. Because he wasn't God at the time. He was in the flesh. So you can't put most mighty and majesty on man. man. Only on God. Go ahead and read. And in thy majesty ride prosperously. Go ahead. Because of truth and meekness and righteousness. Go ahead. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Go ahead. Thine arrows are sharp in the heart of the king's enemies, uh -huh. whereby the people fall under thee. Go ahead. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Oh, <laughs> you mean the one that's talking called him God? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Go ahead. Thou lovest righteousness uh -huh. and hatest wickedness. Go ahead. Therefore, God, thy God. Whoa! This God have a God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God, thy God, finish that, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. Look here, we got to find out who this is. I, we can't, I can't say it no time. Let's go quickly to Hebrews, the first chapter. 
I want to know who this guy is. Hebrews chapter 1. Who is most mighty? Who is God? And who have a God? I got to know who he is. Hebrews chapter 1. See, before I read in the book, I didn't know who he was. Mm. I don't get off into interpretation. Because sometimes I get to talking and I confuse myself. Now how am I going, how am I going to <laughs> interpret a mind big as the one that mm. created the air that we breathe and we ain't never seen it? Hebrews 1, and we're going to start at verse 5. Hebrews 1 and 5. Okay, go ahead. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. thou art my son, uh -huh. this day have I begotten thee. Go ahead. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. No angel, but keep reading. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Well, this guy here. When he bring the first forgotten into the world, he said, let all the angels of God worship him. Go ahead and read. And of the angels he said, uh -huh. who maketh his angels spirits uh -huh. and his ministers a flame of fire. Go ahead. But unto the son he said. But unto the son I said. <laughs> he said. But unto the son I said to myself. <laughs> unto the son I thought. No. But unto the son, he said, go ahead and read. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Go ahead and read. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Uh-huh. Thou hast loved righteousness go ahead. and hated iniquity. Go ahead. Therefore, God. Therefore, God. Even thy God. Even thy God. Hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So I guess Jesus anointed himself, huh? What did the book say, sisters and brothers? Therefore, uh, God, yeah. thy God, thy heaven, even thy God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Read verse 10. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hand. But he said that. Ain't the one that sent said that? Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 13 and read it. But to which of the angels said he at any time, uh -huh. sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? None of the angels he said it, but he said it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the 110th chapter of Psalms and see where he said it at. This is some weird stuff for a guy that's talking to himself. One ten and one. Psalms one ten. And we're gonna read verse one. One ten and verse one. Okay, read it. The Lord said unto my Lord. The Lord said unto my Lord. Wait, wait a minute. Jesus said unto himself. <laughs> Jesus thought to himself. The Lord said unto my Lord. He counseled himself. The Lord said unto my Lord. Okay, I just want to make sure we understood that. Go ahead and read. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. I'm trying to understand this. Let me see what's going on here. <laughs> now I'm sitting here on the left. So now I'm going to sit on my right hand. Wait a minute. Okay then. I got to move the chair. That don't work, because you still don't see nobody but me, do you? You don't see nobody else, do you? Yes. I just want to make a point. Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine image thy footstool. So when Jesus came and died, he went on back to heaven, sisters and brothers. He went back to where he came from. But before he died, he made a request. Let's go look at this request. Let's go into St. John, the 17th chapter. St. John, chapter 17. 
Like I said, I couldn't believe my, I always thought that this person was pretty smart. I'm wondering now. John 17. No, no, Matthew 2. John chapter 17. And we're going to read verse 1 and then we're going to skip. St. John 17. Huh? What did you say, Matthew 2? Mm-hmm. No. You didn't see my red line where I added that, did you? Look on the side. Oh. Y'all don't see the red line on the copy you got? I add is this yesterday morning. Because I wanted to make sure that people know what Jesus' request was before he died. And let's see what this request was. St. John 17. St. John chapter 17 and verse 1. Read it. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. Jesus talking to the Father. Mm-hmm. Now, he, I guess this this flesh and blood body <laughs> talking to the spirit Jesus in heaven. <laughs> Ain't that what they said uh-huh. in the book? <laughs> Get down to verse 5 and let's see what it, for, verse 4, brother, and see what he said. Go ahead. I have glorified thee on the earth. Uh-huh. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou Gave us me to do. Mm. Go ahead and read. And now, O oh Father. And now, O oh Father. And now, O oh myself. <laughs> o oh Father. Go ahead. Glorify thou me with thine own self. Glorify thou me with myself. With thine own self. Go ahead. With the glory which I had with thee uh-huh. before the world was. With the glory I had with me. With thee before the world was. So what did the Lord did? He brought him on back to heaven after his death and put him on the right hand. He said, with the glory I had with thee before the world was. Let's go into Matthew, the second chapter now. Now we go to Matthew chapter 2. I just want to let you know that Jesus, before he left, he said, look, I didn't finish my job. I did what you gave me to do. Now glorify me with the glory I had with thee before the world was. Matthews 2, and we're going to start reading at verse 1 with the, first verse of, with the birth of Jesus here. But we were in Bible system, brother. I'm not, I'm not interpreting this stuff, am I? Okay, I just want to make sure. Because he ain't, ain't one of them wiser than everybody else guy. I don't possess that spirit that's above everybody else. I tell people all the time, I ain't never heard the God, voice of God one time. In my life. I done told y'all the story. One time I was praying when I was younger. I wanted to see him and I felt his presence and I chickened out. I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't, I'm telling you, I got scared. It just went away. I ain't made that mistake no more. What's written is enough for me now. Matthews 2. Matthew 2 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea uh-huh. in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east of Jerusalem. Go ahead. Saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Uh-huh. For we have, heard, we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Go ahead. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. That's because the Romans had made him a king. By the way, this Herod was an Edomite. One of the ones that called himself a Jew. So everybody was troubled because he was the king. And, and when Herod got troubled, somebody died. Go ahead. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. Go ahead. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. Uh-huh. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, Art not thou the least among the princes of Judah? Go ahead. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. And that's what the world don't want to understand, acknowledge either, that he is the king of Israel. That is the king that the Lord, the Father said, put on your sword, O most mighty. Mm-hmm. So now, 
He said, a prophet said it. Let's go in, in the law and look at it. Let's go into Micah, the fifth chapter. Micah chapter 5. And we're going to start at verse 1. Micah chapter 5 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. Now gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. Uh -huh. He hath laid siege against us. Uh -huh. They shall smite the judge of Israel with the rod upon the cheek. They're going to smite the judge of Israel with the rod about, um, on the cheek. Go ahead. But thou, Bethlehem Ephratah, uh -huh. though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, go ahead. yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. So we know who this is talking about, mm -hmm. don't we? This is what the crowd of the Pharisees told Herod. But how long was he wrong? Go ahead. Whose goings forth have been from of old, uh -huh. from everlasting, from everlasting. His going forth have been from old, from everlasting. That means he'd been around. Didn't he? So this is talking Jesus here. We just read that, didn't we? So now, in order... For him to do what he had to do, he had to come here. Now let's go back to St. John, the first chapter. St. John, the first chapter. This is making sense to me. This is making sense to y'all. Mm -hmm. Notice I didn't put no spin on nothing. Just reading the book. I figured this God that, we, that, that created us is a pretty smart God. I figured if he wanted to tell you something, he don't need guys like me to help him. Or to explain what he is saying. All you got to do is just read it. That's why all our television and, and other programs are called The Bible Speaks. Because that's who we let talk. St. John chapter 1. St. John chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 10. St. John chapter 1 and verse 10. Okay, go ahead. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Go ahead. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Go ahead. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That power is his word. You keep his word. Like Peter said, you had the words of eternal life. But go ahead and read. Which were born, not of blood. Say, look, he, he gave them which was born, not of blood. Go ahead. Well, I'm sorry. Gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, uh -huh. which were born not of blood, uh -huh. nor of the will of the flesh. Doesn't mean he didn't have no daddy. Nor of the will of man. Uh-huh. Did but nobody of, lay with no woman? But of God. But of God. Go ahead. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, uh -huh. and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So this word was made flesh. How is it? Then he gonna made, be made flesh unless he get him a body. He needed a body, didn't he? Let's go and look at it. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter. He was telling you about that. Hebrews chapter 10. He needed him a body for what he had to do. Hebrews 10, and we're going to read verse 1, then we're going to skip down. Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Verse 1, read it. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers down too perfect. See, the Lord needed a sin offering. Isaiah tell you, the Lord looked all over. He couldn't find no man clean enough to offer for the sins of this man. So he had to gird up and come and do it himself. The father told him, get on down there and die for the people. And he said, because uh, animal sacrifices could not make the commas they are perfect. Why? Skip down to verse 4. Verse 4 and go ahead. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats 
could take away sin. So if the blood of bulls and goats couldn't take away sin, then they were just having exercise and fertility, wasn't it? Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Go ahead. But a body hast thou prepared me. Oh. He said, now, you don't like the killing of animals because they don't remove no sin. So when I'm coming into the world, I said, you didn't want that. So what did he prepare for him? A body hast thou prepared me. He didn't say I prepared it myself, didn't he? Thou prepared me. He said that before he left heaven. So he should have said, a body have I prepared me. <laughs> he didn't say that, did uh -uh, he? Thou. Let's go and see if we're going to change. Let's go in the 119th chapter of Psalm. And we're going to start at verse 73. Psalms 119. Psalms chapter 119. See, pay attention to them little bitty words and you'll be surprised. They speak a whole lot, sisters and brothers. Psalm 119, 119. Psalm 119, and we're going to start at verse 73. That's 119. Psalm is a long psalm. Verse 73. Now, this is the Lord talking by the mouth of David, believe it or not. David told you that the Spirit of the Lord spoke by him. Verse 73. Go ahead. Thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Uh huh. Give me understanding that I may learn thy commandments. Didn't Jesus say he only he, he know what his father only what his father told him? So thy hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me. Uh, give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Read the next verse. Go ahead. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me. Uh-huh. Because I have hoped in thy word. David. That ain't talking about David, is it? We ain't never seen David. That's right. So how can we be glad? We ain't never seen Jesus, but the whole thing is the people that saw him, they was glad. Why? He's because I have hoped in your name. Skip down to verse 79 and see what else he said. Go ahead. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimony. And let those that fear thee, Father, turn unto me. He didn't say, let those that fear me turn unto me. Right. Those that fear thee turn unto me, because I have known your testimony. So now, he gets this body. Let's go into Hebrews, the second chapter. The way this body was prepared for him. That's why when the angel told Mary she was going to have a, a child, she said, how can this be, being that I have never known a man? Then he said, well, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. This is talking about the Holy Spirit, an angel, sister and brother. This body prepared, and it was brought and injected into the woman, sister and brother. Hebrews 2, Hebrews chapter 2. And we're going to start at verse 9. Hebrews 2 and verse 9. Hebrews 2 and 9. Okay, go ahead. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. Oh, so he needed something to die, didn't he That's say? Right. Sacrifice and offer you would it not? A body. But a body hath thou prepared me. Why? Because he needed something to die. Go ahead and read crowned with glory and honor, uh -huh. that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Because God can't die. So God had to take over a body that could die, which the Father made. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14 and go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, uh -huh. he also himself likewise took part of the same, uh -huh. that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. So that body that the father prepared for him, he put it on like we put on a coat. Mm -hmm. And the angel came and injected him to the woman that he could die. So through his blood, he could save the rest of us. Go ahead and read. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime 
subject to bondage. Go ahead. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, uh -huh. but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So he took not on him the nature of angels. He took on him the seed of Abraham. And even that was prophesied. Because the Lord told Abraham, because you have obeyed me in thy seed, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So he had to come through, it, through uh, uh, Abraham as well as through uh, uh, David. So now, once he had put on his flesh and body and he showed up in the flesh, who was with him? Let's go into Timothy, 1 Timothy, the third chapter. 1 Timothy, the third chapter. And we're going to read one verse. 1 Timothy 3, 1 Timothy 3, and 16. Read it. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And that's what we need to understand. Great is the mystery of godliness. You know, he can do stuff that we, we can't even imagine doing. All you got to do is look at the dirt that you are. He took a pile of dirt and made this perfect machinery that can feed itself, clothe itself, grow food, create cars, create planes, create phones that you can talk to across the world and it ain't got no strings attached to it. Put, it, put, put a good piece of creation in it. Mm -hmm. Greatly is godliness is the controversy of God. Let's go ahead and read and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Go ahead. God was manifest in the flesh. What does manifest mean? He came forth, didn't he? Right. God was manifest in the flesh. Go ahead and read. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Uh-huh. Preached unto the Gentiles. Go ahead. Believed on in the world. Uh-huh. Received up into glory. Because that was his job. Mm -hmm. He came in the flesh. He preached the gospel. He even like said, preached to the Gentile. I used to, where was that then? I remembered the woman, the Samaritan woman. Justified in the spirit. And once he got through, went on back to where he came from. Received up into glory. Let's go into Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and show then that is exactly what he did. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Well, the Lord put this here, sister and brother. All we got to do is read it. We don't have to get off in a little bit of stories. Just tell it like it is. Who knows? You might end up delivering yourself from the lake of fire. Hebrews 10, and we're going to start at verse 8. Hebrews 10 and verse 8. Okay, read it. Above when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Uh -huh. Neither had his pleasure therein. Go ahead. Which are offered by the law. So that's why he needed that body. Mm -hmm. That's the law of animal sacrifice. But it didn't help. Go ahead and read. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Go ahead. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. So we see why he needed a body, didn't mm -hmm. he? Needed something that could die, but go ahead. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices. Go ahead. Which can never take away sin. Uh-huh. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Go ahead. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. So we read that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. He says, Set the Lord said unto my Lord. Sit thou on my right hand yes. until I make thine enemy thy footstool. That took place when he rose from the dead. After he had done what he came here to do, sisters and brothers. What it says, who sacrificed him? Read that first, that tenth chapter uh, verse again. I know you move on, but read it again anyway. Yes, team. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
okay, I just wanted to make sure that we know who's being sanctified here, mm -hmm. who's being offered here. Now let's go into Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Isaiah, chapter 53. Isaiah, chapter 53. Lord, go through all of this writing, all this dictation to all of these people, and don't nobody read it. That's what's so bad about it. Don't nobody read it. Just tell it like it is. You'll prosper. We're going to start at verse 1. Isaiah 53 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Not to many. Go ahead. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He said, and why is he called the arm of the Lord? Because he's the one that the Lord is working through. Go ahead and read. He is despised and rejected of men, uh -huh. a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Go ahead. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. Uh -huh. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. And Israel still despised him. Even when they converted the Edomite to Judaism, they taught them to despise him. Ain't that something? Go ahead and read. Surely he hath borne our griefs uh -huh. and carried our sorrows. Go ahead. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Who smote him? God smote him. Go ahead and read. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquities. Go ahead. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, uh -huh. and with his stripes we are healed. Because he's the only one that can die and wash your sins away. But skip down to verse 9. Verse 9, and go ahead. And he made his grave with the wicked. Didn't he, didn't he wasn't he on the on cross between two thieves? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And with the rich in his death. Didn't the, the one that took him off the cross, wasn't he a rich man? Yes. When him and Nicodemus took him down, didn't this rich man bury him in his supper car, which That's had right. never been used? Everything is, God called all of these little bitty things that nobody paid attention to, how you figure you can lie on him and get away with it. Go ahead and read. Because he had done no violence, uh -huh. neither was any deceit in his mouth. He had done no violence, neither did he lie, but what happened? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Let it please him to bruise himself. Please, please the Lord to bruise him. Who? I'm going to tell you, I can holler who too and hit the rock. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord. Go ahead. Let it please the Lord to bruise him. Go ahead and read. He had put him to grief. Who had put him to grief? The Lord. Go ahead. He had put him to grief. Uh-huh. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When he shall make his own soul an offering for sin. Make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Finish it. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. So who crucified him? Who had him killed? The Lord did, the one that we call the Father. I saw this guy, this guy went and quoted Isaiah, ninth chapter, when he going to say, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. He's going to be called the Counselor, Wonderful, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. See, that's the Father. Look, he is not the Father, he is the Father of Israel. When he adopted Israel, he gave us his name. That's why Paul told you in the ninth chapter of Romans, we, to Israel, belong to adoption. When he got Jacob, he said, what's your name? He said, Jacob. He said, no longer will you be called Jacob, but Israel. Then he went down and told Moses to go and tell Pharaoh, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And if you don't let my son go, I'm going to slay your firstborn. If Israel is his firstborn, the how is he the father of us all and he only adopted one nation? Right. So he's the father of Israel, but he is not the father. But had you known that, had you read, you would know that. So the father is the one that made his soul an offer of sin. Didn't we read that? Yep. Let's go into Psalms chapter 55. Psalm chapter 55. 
that we're just going to read this book, sisters and brother. And if anybody come against this, they're coming against the book, not me. I didn't write one thing in here. And like I said, I didn't even read it first. Antoine read it first. So he's the one that you jumped. <laughs> Antoine, why are you reading this stuff, man? Because <laughs> it's in the Bible. 55, let's start at verse 12. Psalm chapter 55, we're going to start reading at verse 12. Okay. Go ahead. For it was not an enemy that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Wait a minute. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, that reproached me. Then I could have borne it. Go ahead and read. Neither was it he that hated me that did magnify himself against me. Oh, so the one that magnifies himself against me, he didn't hate he me didn't either, hate didn't he? Uh-uh. Go ahead and read. Then I would have hid myself from him. He said, then I would have hid. You know, somebody hates you, you, you hide from them. Right. He said, but no, it was not an enemy that reproached me. Neither was he him that hated me that lifted himself up against me. Go ahead. But it was thou, uh-huh. a man mine equal. Whoa, brother boy, that's man, see. See, he's talking about man. Look, didn't God say he's a man of war? That's right. He's talking about the one that was in heaven with him. It was thou, the man mine equal. Didn't we read in Philippians, the second chapter, that in let this mind be in you? That's right. Which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God? He said, it was thou, a man, mine equal. Go ahead and read. My God. My God. Oh, my, he said, I only do what he tells me to do, right, didn't he? That's right. This thing is falling in place, right. ain't it? <laughs> my God, go ahead. And mine acquaintance. And mine acquaintance. What else? We took sweet counsel together. Whoa. We took sweet counsel together. I didn't decide in my own mind. I didn't talk to myself. I said, look here, Jesus. You go on down there and die. Then Jesus answered, okay, Jesus. I'm going to go on down there and die. He didn't say I took sweet no. counsel. We, we took, took sweet. sweet counsel together. Go ahead and finish that. And walked unto the house of God in company. And we walked unto the house of God by myself. In company. Me and myself. In company. That means you're walking with somebody else. That's right. How do you circumvent this, sisters and brothers? How do you get away from this? So he said, the one that killed me, he wasn't my enemy. The one that crucified me, he didn't hate me. We took we counsel together. I always said Jesus lost the bet between the two. So that's why he had to come do the dying. But he said, we took sweet counsel together. We walked into the house of God together. Now, when he was crucified, let's see what happened. Let's go into Matthew, the 27th chapter. Matthew, chapter 27. But I don't know why we're reading all this stuff because we was commanded not to let no scripture change his, your mind. I know he said it because he kept on saying it. One, one, one. So now y'all are disobeying the commandments of Sir Gino. Matthew 27. And we're going to start at verse 35. Matthew 27 and verse 35. Read it. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Uh -huh. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. So they did that, and the prophet spoke it. Then let's see what happened while he was on the cross. Skip down to verse 45. Verse 45. Go ahead. 
Now from the sixth hour, there, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Go ahead. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Go ahead. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, so now this flesh and blood Jesus that's on the ground is crying out mm -hmm. to the spirit mm -hmm. Jesus that's in heaven. Mm -hmm. okay. Come on, sisters and brothers. If you believe that, I won't sell you a bridge. I'll sell you the whole city. He said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That's that flesh crying, but you know he had to say that? Because he felt that pain before he came. Let's go into Psalm chapter 22, 22nd chapter of Psalm. What is some strange stuff the guy that did all this by himself? And love talking by him. He loved praying to himself. He loved even lamenting to himself. He loved even accusing himself. I'm accusing me of abandoning me. Myself, myself. Why have you abandoned myself? That's what we would be led, we would, we would be led to believe. Ain't that correct? Psalm chapter 22 and verse 1. 22 and 1. Okay, go ahead. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, we heard that, didn't That's we? That's right. But he said a lot more. Keep reading. Why, has, why art thou so far from helping me? Why art thou so far from helping me? Look here, man. We're talking about this. I took this trip, but it's hurting. That's right. Because I got this flesh body on That's me, right. and this flesh and blood body hurt. Now you didn't forsook me. Go ahead and read. Why art thou so far from helping me uh -huh. and from the words of my roar roaring? Go, go ahead. Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. Uh -huh. And in the night season, and I'm not silent. Look what they've done to me. Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16, and go ahead. For dogs have compassed me. Now, that's these people that did that. He called mm. them dogs, didn't he? But mm -hmm. dogs have compassed me. Go ahead and read. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Go ahead and read. They pierced my hands and my feet. They nailed spikes in my hand and in my feet. He telling it all. Look what mm -hmm. you have got me into. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. I may tell all my bones. Uh huh. They look and stare upon me. Go ahead. They part my garments among them and cast lots. Upon my vesture. Ain't that what they did to Jesus? Mm -hmm. But what is he doing? He is telling the Father, look what they've done to me. So now Jesus crying out to himself, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? But he used the wrong word. He should have said, myself, mm -hmm. myself. Why have thou forsaken me? I don't care if you is in the spirit and I'm a flesh and blooded body on the ground. You steal myself. Mm -hmm. Let's go into Revelation, the fifth chapter. And I want to see how we're going to put a spin on this. Revelation chapter 5. It's not good to walk in Alice because the book man might be waiting on you. <laughs> Revelation 5. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Because this show never make you scratch your head. Verse 1, go ahead. And I saw on the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Okay, now I got to get me a throne here now. Let me see the book here. And in, and, in right hand, and, and, and in the right hand of him had a book. Go ahead and read. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book 
and to loose the seven, the, loose the seals thereof. Go ahead. And no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Go ahead. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. Now in this book that he had, there was no man on earth, in earth, or under the earth could look on the book, let alone open the seals. And he said, I cried much because there was no man to open the book. But go ahead and read. And one of the elders said unto me, weep not. Okay. Be behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Weep not, because the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he hath prevailed to open the book. Go ahead and read. And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. So who is the lamb? Jesus. Okay, so he saw that lamb, right? And what did the lamb do? Go ahead. And he came and took the book out wait, of the... Wait a minute now. And he came. Go ahead. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. So, he took the book, okay, out of the right hand of him that sat on the throne, okay. That's weird, ain't it? <laughs> He's doing all this stuff. He on the throne with a book. The night gonna come and take the book out of the right hand of himself. Come on, sisters and brothers. Come on. How is that supposed to be? He should have said, and he took the book out of the right hand and gave it to himself on the left hand. That might have made more sense, right? But anyway, what verse are we? We have verse 8. Go ahead and read. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vows full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Go ahead. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. Go ahead. For thou wast slain. For thou wast slain. And has redeemed us to God by the blood out of every, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. He didn't say, and thou wast slain and redeemed us to yourself. Right. He said, to God. And what else did he say? And has made us unto our God. And has made us unto yourself. Our God. Our God. Go ahead. Kings and priests. Uh -huh. And we shall reign on the earth. And we shall reign on the earth. So this now, that means then that Jesus and all of these people that come up in the first resurrection, they're going to rule the earth. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. And once they get through reigning, let's see what's going to happen when Jesus get through with his reign and us is helping him. Let's go into 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. And we're going to start reading at verse 22. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 22. Okay. Go ahead. For as in Adam all die, uh -huh. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Go ahead. But every man in his own order. Uh -huh. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. That lets you know ain't nobody in heaven, right? But go ahead and read. Then cometh the end. Then cometh the end. Go ahead. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to himself. To God. To God. Go ahead and read. Even the Father. Uh, even the Father. So we know which one we're talking That's about, right. right? But then it might be Jesus. Remember, he's the Father in creation. He is the Son in redemption. Now he is the Holy Ghost in the church. You mean that ain't it? Well, then he is just the Father in creation, and now he's the Son in redemption. Didn't say that, did he? Read that 24 from, let's, from the top and keep going. Go ahead. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, uh -huh. even the Father, 
when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. And when he shall have put down all rule and all mm -hmm. authority and all power. Go ahead. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. Now that's doing a thousand year millennium. Right. Go ahead and read. The last enemy shall be destroyed is death. So he got to reign until he put all enemies under his feet. And the last enemy that's going to be destroyed is death because death is an enemy. Because God created man to live forever. But skip down to verse 28. Let's see what happened when he finished this. Go ahead and read. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, uh -huh. then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him. Wait a minute. I'm messed up. You mean when all things are subdued, to him. To the Who son. is him? The son. The son. Then the son himself is going to be subject to him. Go ahead and read. Be subject unto him that put all things under him. Oh, go ahead. You keep talking to people here. That God may be all in all. That God may be all in all. So, sisters and brothers, when all of this thing is done, when Jesus finished everything, then cometh the end. I'm going to throw a little wrinkle in here, being that I ain't got but three uh, 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 scriptures left. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Revelation, the 20th chapter, and we're going to see the transition here. Revelation chapter 20. I can't believe I did all this lesson so quick. I must be having fun. You ain't supposed to have fun. Not beating up on somebody. But I ain't doing that. I'm reading the scripture. Shame on you, boy. Revelation 20. And we're going to start reading at verse 11. 20 and 11. Go ahead. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, uh -huh. from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. Go ahead. And there was found no place for them. Uh -huh. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Go ahead. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Now the dead, small and great, stood before God. Now we got to figure out which one is this. And the book was open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. Go ahead and read. And the dead were judged out of those things. And which the were, dead were judged out of those things. Which were written in the book. Which was written in the Apocrypha. Which was written in the book. The book of Joshua. In the books. The book of Enoch. In the books. Oh. In this book that's in your lap. That's right. I just wanted to get that straight. Go ahead and read. According to their works. According to their works. And what happened? Go ahead. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. Uh-huh. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Go ahead. And they were judged every man according to their works. Go ahead. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Didn't he say the last enemy that he going to destroy is what? Is death. Death. So death and hell is the grave. Was cast into the lake of fire, just saying, hey, that's the end of you, partner. Yep. Don't need you no more. Because mm -hmm. you ain't going to be killing nobody else. Finish that. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life uh -huh. was cast into the lake of fire. Go ahead. Now, and that's it, sisters and brothers. Now, look at the transition. They put 21 in this chapter. Chapter 21 don't belong now. You know why? Because we're going to read right into it. So now, didn't we read that once he have delivered up the kingdom mm -hmm. to the Father, then he's going to become subject? Mm -hmm. So once he de terminated death, here come the Father. Revelation 21 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Uh -huh. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Go ahead. And there was no more sea. Uh -huh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, Coming down from God out of heaven, Go ahead. prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So now here come New Jerusalem, coming down from God. Now Jesus done put this earth in order, and he done dominated death. Now here come New Jerusalem. Let's see who's in it. Go ahead. 
And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Go ahead. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. The tabernacle of God is with men? And he will dwell with them. Wait a minute. Jesus has been on this earth for a thousand mm -hmm. years. Right. Then why are you going to tell me that God going to dwell with you and you've been here with, he been here with us for a thousand years? This ain't making no sense. Somebody done confused me. I thought Jesus was all of it. If he was here and he didn't leave, who is this that's coming from right, heaven? Right. Boy, this is messing me up. Start back at the top of the verse and keep going. Now I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Go ahead. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, uh -huh. and he will dwell with them, Go ahead. and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So that had to be the Father, mm -hmm. because he said he shall dwell with men. Jesus has been dwelling with men for a thousand years. In fact, he's the one that changed all the men into spirit beings. So this Johnny come lately, going to come and take all the glory? Yes, because he said when he have put all things on his feet, then he's going to turn it over to the Father. Ain't that what he said? We read that with our own eyes, didn't we? What verse were we? We have verse 4. Go ahead and read. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Go ahead. And there shall be no more death, uh -huh. neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Why ain't there no more death? Because, because Jesus, Jesus terminated, died. didn't he? No pain for the former things that passed away. Go ahead and read. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said, I make all things new. All things. Because why are you new? Because they ain't got no more death. They ain't got no more mortal. Everybody immortal now. But skip down to verse 22. And let's see who's going to be around. Verse 22. Go ahead and read. And I saw no temple therein. And there was no temple in New Jerusalem when it came down. Uh -huh. Go ahead. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Wait a minute. Who is this God, God Almighty, and who is this Lamb? The Father and the Son. Go ahead and read. And the city had no need of the sun. Go ahead. Neither of the moon to shine in it. For the Lord, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. There they are again. They're sitting together now, ain't they? That's right. So you mean the flesh and blood body <laughs> is sitting next to the spirit body. Well, there ain't no flesh left, is it? They are together. This is the last place, sister and brother. I'm going to read this, and this is the end of it. Let's go into Revelation, the third chapter. Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to read, start at verse 20. Revelation 3 and verse 20. 3 and 20. Okay, read. Behold, I stand at the, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Uh-huh. To him that overcometh, Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? Go ahead. Even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. <laughs> you know what I heard this person say about that? Maybe one throne, so if he sat down with him, he must have sat in his lap. Did I tell y'all this or did you read it with your own eyes? Read it. And I want to say one thing, sisters and brothers. Anybody that allow somebody to lie on the scripture and you go with it, you are just as guilty as they are. And the same fire that he's on his way to, you're going to be shortly behind him. Thank you for your time. And just remember one thing. I didn't tell you this. Antoine read it to you.